Okay, hi everyone. This is Zen Honeycutt, Moms Connect Call. This is Monday night, April 13th, and we do this call almost in every single Monday night. Get together so we can share and support each other with, uh, we educate and empower mothers and others with actions and solutions to create healthy communities. And that means anything that could threaten the health of our children or our families, uh, we will do our best to address it. Uh, maybe we're not doing every single topic, but we mostly do GMOs, glyphosate, toxins, and most recently 4 slash 5G. And so we have experts that we've consulted with, or we bring on this call, or we post articles or videos on our website on momsacrossamerica.org. And if you have not signed up, please do sign up on momsacrossamerica.org on our newsletter. That's how you will find out next week. You'll get the link to this call um, if by any chance I don't do a Facebook Live or a um, Instagram Live just before the call. So sign up for our newsletter on momsacrossamerica.org. You'll get weekly uh, emails from us, maybe, maybe two or three times a week at the most. And um, you'll get the links to join this call on a consistent basis. And you can put that up on your calendar. Okay, so tonight's call, we're going to talk about uh, local farmers and the food supply crisis and what you can do about that. I already had a question emailed to me about that. We're also going to talk about 4 slash 5G. And um, I'm going to go over some of the most important points from Dr. Martin Paul who is a University of, um, no, sorry, that he's not University of Washington professor. I'll, I'll give you his bio, but he, Dr. Mar Martin Paul is one of the premier um, experts on, on uh, microwave radiation and radio frequency radiation. And he had a call last week with Occupy EMF um, uh, harm. And I'm gonna give you the points that he went over just in case you were not invited to that call or didn't see it or weren't able to make it. And then the, um, the last point I want to cover is staying sane and healthy. Um, but I think, I, you know what, I really want to start off with just having maybe three people share something that they're grateful for out of this whole COVID-19 shutdown that has happened. Something that you've learned from your family or your friends or something that like your kids have done that is funny that you normally would not have um, seen them do. Think about it for a second. I'm, I'll go first and I'll, I'll share something. So um, maybe you can be thinking about being present to your life, just so we can start off with a little gratitude. Um, we don't often do this, but my teacher's parent, uh, my teeth, my sorry, my son's teacher did this on our parent teacher conference call that we had on Zoom, and I thought it was really great. So I'm going to start off by saying that normally during this, um, during during the regular time at school year, my kids are so stressed out. I have a 17 to 15 year old and, and an 11 year old, and normally they're so stressed out from being good for six hours at school right, doing sports, and then they come home and they get a snack and they've got like two or three hours of homework ahead of them. So normally dinner time is super stressful because they're stressed out, you know, they've been a lot going on all day and then they've got homework ahead of them, ahead of them. so they don't really want to talk and they don't really want to, they're not very communicative and everybody's kind of stressed at each other. So now it's totally different. Now we're talking for like an hour. My husband and I are sharing stories from our childhood. Our kids are asking us questions. And so I'm super grateful that things have slowed down and um, we're able to connect more as a family. That's pretty awesome. Does anybody else have anything that, that you've learned during this time period or you're grateful for? Anything? I'm, great, I'm grateful for not my alarm not going off at 5.30 in the morning. Um, I'm also, I'm also grateful that I'm getting still paid my full pay, but that, that we have a code, we have a code that where I can say work shortage and they're still paying me for that. So I can work for three or four hours and then I can go over to the greenhouse and help Will do stuff at the greenhouse. So, and I have time that I'm putting my garden in my backyard together. So I'm very grateful for that. I just wish the weather would get nicer. But that'll and come. you have a rock and garden. You're taking this plain, flat backyard and turning it into a food forest and an enormous garden. So that is really cool. Susie, what are you grateful for? You can unmute. Um, I was just going to say, this really forced me to step back and look at what I was doing with my time and energy and um, who I was investing in and has really helped me to reprioritize in a way that I've never done in my life. And um, my son is 13 and nonverbal. And we have been able to, through this time of, it sounds so sad, but it's true, forced to be together 24 seven, 
um, we have found deeper ways to communicate and to connect. And it's just been mind blowing the change um, that I've seen in him and in myself. So it's helped me with pretty much everything across the board, but that relationship with my child is just amazing. So I'm very, very thankful for that. That is super awesome, especially when you can say that when he's nonverbal. So that, that means that you are really connecting with, with him in, in uh, deeper ways. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Anybody else? One more? What are you grateful for? What's something that you want? Yes, Lori. Um, well, it's funny because just before all this took off, um, I started school again, and it was a second chance that I didn't see coming. I haven't been in college for like 20 years, and Pride right in my cats, they're getting hungry. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm going for my bachelor's in psychology. So um, I was really grateful that that started before all this happened. Um, and so I've been doing that. Um, and then I was able to get another part-time job. I do medical transportation, that's my regular job. And uh, that got down to like nothing for like two weeks and then um, then it started, they started giving me like maybe 10 hours a week, maybe, or no, 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 like five hours a week. But, um, so I have a little bit of that and I got a part-time job that I'm doing soon. So I'm able to like stay afloat and I got schoolwork. So I guess I could say I'm grateful for that. that and the awesome. slowing down is kind of nice, but it's still worrisome. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, that's great. Well, it sounds like people are, are balancing things a little bit more. I like the shift in perspective and priorities and learning. It sounds like we're all, uh, you know, we're learning something new, taking this time to learn something new. So I really invite you, if you didn't get to share, to maybe share with your family something that you're grateful for the next time you have a meal together with them. And also think about something new that you'd like to learn and ask your family members, you know, what is new that something new that you'd like to learn? We have another month of this shutdown, most likely. Um, and we can use this time to learn a new instrument or read or a new craft or a hobby or something like that and make time and space in order to, to uh, create that. And that's how we're going to create the future that we want, which is um, one of health and, free health and freedom with um, Moms Across America supporters. We think about what is that future that we want and what are the steps that we can take to learn to, um, to achieve that, right? We're only going to achieve that if we work together with other people and collaborate. So now we're going to talk about some of the things that are going on in the world. And um, if anybody has any ideas, if you can put them in the chat box for now while I'm screen sharing. I don't think I can see them while um, I'm screen sharing, but please feel free to do so. And I'll look back and I'll switch back on it and answer any questions. Um, and if you have ideas about what we can do about this, how we can collaborate, Moms Across America has some great resources. We have the ability to put out press releases and connect with other organizations that reach hundreds of thousands of people. And um, one of the headlines going on right now is that not just Florida dairy farmers, this is just one article, but Florida dairy farmers dump enough excess milk to fill an Olympic, Olympic swimming pool after the coronavirus cutbacks. And also Wisconsin farmers, I'm going to play just a few minutes of this so that you can hear. situation we just 
Okay, so I'm just going to stop it there because he just talks about the situation a little bit more. But basically, what the what he's saying is that they don't have the capability to make cheese and make yogurt, and they can't sell the milk raw. They have to send it to a processor to homogenize it and pasteurize it, basically take all the good stuff out of it, right? And um, and so they they're forced to dump it because there there's a shelf life for this stuff, right? It doesn't last that long. And in addition, um, other, other farmers that have produce, we learned from other articles that they only have a three-day window for a lot of produce. And so it is, um, yeah, and this is just the milk. I'm sorry, I thought I brought up some articles about, about the, um, the vegetables, but I think you guys have all seen them, right? The squash in Florida that's being dump, dumped and um, the tomatoes and the onions. And the problem is, again, that they have a, three-day window to be able to get the, these, this ripe produce, maybe not onions, I would question that because, you know, they last a lot longer, but to get them from their farm to the consumer for many, in many cases like tomatoes, they just don't have the distribution and they don't have the capability to get those out. They had one buyer, right? That buyer's gone. It's a, you know, it was a distributor that maybe that gave, sent them all out to uh, to, made, uh, to restaurants or to schools, and then they no longer have that. So what can we do? Well, I just wrote an article for, um, I just wrote an article for another, I don't know if it's going to go in Whole Foods Magazine or Masters of Health, but um, I'm going to share with you an article that I put up on Moms Across America instead right now, because that this one's already up. And we mentioned some of these ways. This is on Moms Across America. And this is about supporting small farmers impacted by COVID-19 COVID cancellations. And here's some of the things that you, you can do. Here's the five ways that you can um, find local farmers and purchase direct. You can go to the link on the national CSA directory. Uh, you can also go to the USDA site, it has a CSA that includes organic and non-organic. And by CSA, I mean consumer supported agriculture, right? Those are when you're buying directly from the farmer. There's a CSA Day 2019 also has a list. Also search on Modern Farmer. There's grocers that sell ugly fruit and vegetables, which is always very supportive because most grocery stores won't take a quote unquote ugly fruit or vegetables. So then there's that loss as well. Imperfect Foods also delivers in certain areas. And I don't know why I didn't put the link up, but we have in my area Farm Fresh to You and also in Southern California, the Ecology Center and this was really cool. I saw in my inbox today, the Ecology Center in San Juan Capistrano. I know this is just a local thing, but this is just an example. This may be ha happening locally around you too. They're inviting people to buy a box, which is $38 a week of vegetables. And then if they want to donate a box, they just, at, they ask them to buy two, you know, one they'll donate and one, and they've had 600 people get buy boxes to donate. That is really awesome. So that means the local people who don't, you know, who lost their jobs, whichever, are going to get free boxes of vegetables, something healthy. That is so great. So take a look at these links on our website and see what you can do as far as reaching out and finding local farmers. And one thing that we are um, interested in hearing from you is if you are a person in your local area and you would like to get together a list of local farmers and sort of be a champion for them. This is how the Western A Price Foundation started. This is how um, co-ops in Japan started when the milk in Japan got tainted. It was either baby formula or regular milk got tainted by a big, big huge national grocery store chain in Japan. I think it was back in the 80s. I'm gonna get the facts on this for my article. Um, there was a crisis in Japan, right? All of a sudden, nobody trusted the, the grocery stores because this milk, either baby formula or milk, was tainted. Well, what they did was they turned what the Chinese call crisis, and they, it's the, the Chinese symbol for crisis is the symbol for danger and opportunity right next to each other. So they turned this danger, you know, in the food supply into an opportunity, and they started co-ops. And now in Japan, there are dozens of co-ops that are anywhere from 100,000 people to a million people in one co-op. And all of those people support local farmers. So those farmers have markets, right? And it's direct to the customer and they get more money for their, their food. And so if you're a person that likes that idea of getting food direct from your, um, supply, from your 
you know, local farmers. You could be somebody, uh, a Moms Across America chapter leader that just all you do is look up these local connections to local farmers. And then you go on um, Nextdoor or Meetup or social media at Facebook, your mom's groups from local areas and say, hey guys, I wanna start a Moms Across America chapter and we're gonna share local food sources. We're gonna buy our food as a group, right? From this farmer and you will get way better prices. Like for instance, if you buy um, a whole cow, right? If, you, if you're into eating meat, I know some of our, our moms are not. Um, in Australia, they call it a kill share, right? So it's a share of a kill of a cow. And you can get beef that's grass-fed organic for $5.99 a pound, which is, um, and that includes steaks, which would usually, right, in the grocery store for a steak be like $12.99 or, or $16.99 a pound. So you can get much better prices if you're buying together as a group. So if you're interested in doing something like that, please email us at zen at momsacrossamerica.org and let me know if you're interested in becoming a chapter leader. We have a few other things that we would like for people to be able to do, like give out our flyers and collaborate with other groups. And we envision a Moms Across America chapter being actually more of a cooperative. So we, we might actually call them Moms Across America cooperatives instead. But the idea of a chapter is what people, you know, sort of can understand better. And as a cooperative, you would, you would, invite groups in so it wouldn't just be moms across america information that we would be giving out to local moms we would once we get together and can have um, meetings we or right now you could have a zoom meeting so what you could do is go on zoom i think you get does anybody know is it 40 minutes free on zoom for 40 yeah 40 minutes so what you can do is start a zoom meeting and say you know moms connect you know moms connect or uh, moms across america mission viejo chapter you know, connect call or whatever, like whatever you want to call it, or, you know, Chicago or whatever, and create a, just create that link and then go on next door and meet up or Facebook or whatever, and say, we're having this call on Friday night at five o'clock or Saturday morning at 10, we're going to connect and we're going to talk about how we can um, strengthen our food supply and our local communities and bring help, you know, create healthy communities. And we will support you with flyers and information and um, a few guidelines, you know, and you don't have to do a whole like president, secretary, treasurer thing. You can just say, I'm starting a group and I wanna connect with my local, with local moms. Cause here's the thing, once you get together with your, with local moms around the food supply and supporting these local farmers, you have much more power, buying power, right? You can get cheaper prices. You can go to these farmers and say, look, we've got 20 moms that wanna consistently buy from you. And, and that will really strengthen, right? The, the farmer's output help save them from going into bankruptcy and collapsing this entire food supply. So you can have more buying power. You know that your food, where you're getting your, food, getting your food from, you're connecting with other moms that are like-minded. Once we can actually get together, you'll be able to have a play date with these moms and you know they're buying all organic food or you know maybe allergy friendly food, right? Things like that. And if you have a mom who has a kid with a lot of allergies, you can say, hey, would you be the one to look up allergy friendly restaurants or bakeries or places where you can get that? I know here in Orange County, there's a bakery in um, San Juan Capistrano or San Clemente actually that has nut-free, dairy-free, gluten-free, you know, like the whole bakery is allergy friendly. And a lot of people don't know about that. So that would be something that I would put on the list, right, for, for our local moms. So if you're interested in being sort of like a, a rallying person, you know, to get people together and do this. This is what I see is the mo one of the most important things that we can do is connect with our local um, uh, neighbors and support each other. Because folks, this COVID-19 example, whether you think it's blown out of proportion or not, it is a reality that we're shut down right now, right? <laughs> I know. It is a reality that we're shut down. And one of the other future realities we're going to be we're going to be facing most likely is uh, power outages right? Because of power consumption from uh, overuse of energy from things heating up and things like that. You don't think so, Matt? I think it's very likely that we're going to have power outages at some point. Not right now. I'm not saying right now, but when things heat up and in certain areas, you know, of the country, there could be power outages. And when that happens, that affects the grocery stores, that affects the, 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 the food that's available, that affects the delivery of food, that affects the pumping of gas, it affects whether or not, in some cases, your toilet will flush. There's a lot of stuff that'll affect. And the people that you're gonna need to, to support or that will need your support will be your neighbors. 
It won't be, you know, people on social media. So just consider that getting to know your neighbors is a very important thing to do and getting your food locally right now. These farmers are, um, many of them will, may shut down. You know, they may not be able to recover from this. So it's really important to support local farmers and this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that was number one. And um, number two is, I don't know if this is possible. I'm just putting this out there, but the Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms, it's called WOOF program. I would ask them, can I wear protective gear and come help you on your farm if that's what they need? Because a lot of them right now don't have workers. They're not able to, the workers are not able to get to them. There's been restrictions or whichever, people are sick. And so a lot of them don't have people to help harvest on their farm. And if you can help with them, especially the organic farms is where I would go because I don't want to touch pesticides. Um, but they, they have farms around there and you look up on WWOOF, you have to sign up to get, I think it's 40 bucks a year to get um, permission to get connected with the farmers. But for, in my case, when we did a cross country trip, it was totally worth it because the experiences that we had were invaluable in staying on these farms. You get to, they feed you uh, at least two meals a day and they, you, they get to stay on their property. Some places actually have rooms you can sleep in and you know take showers and all that. Other places you just have to park an RV or a tent. Um, but you work on the farm for about four hours in the morning and um, you get to learn how to farm, you know, learn how to harvest and plant. And it's amazing. It's such a great experience with kids. And when you're going cross country and you don't want to spend 65 bucks a night for a campsite, this is a great way. To, and you don't want to stay, you know, every night in a different place. You want to stay somewhere for a week. This is a great thing to do. So and you get to help farmers and learn uh, what to do on, on a farm. And then the next thing is to, number three, is to eat more local whole foods and vegetables and fruits and vegetables. You may want to try a challenge um, that we've been doing, which is eat meat once a week. So this, by this, we mean red meat specifically. Um, well, actually, no, we've just been doing all meat. We've just been eating meat once a week. And um, I have to confess, I'm sorry, my vegan friends, I still eat um, a fish now and then, like once a week or so, and then some um, dairy now and then. Um, but it's all organic and we're really careful about our sources. But this is also something that will support you in using up those vegetables that you buy because you're going to get a lot of vegetables from the CSA and you got to learn how to make them. So things like potato leek soup is awesome. I, that's, I never would have cooked potato leek soup before, but I got a leek in the CSA box. I didn't know what the heck to do with it. And I, you know, looked up a recipe and learned it. Now that is my kid's favorite soup, potato leek soup. So, hey, Zen. Yeah. Um, before you get too far down, Frankie had put a comment in here about the buyer's club you were talking about. She said, we'll yes. take business away from local growers that, that sell at farmer's markets. Oh, no, this is to support those local growers that normally sell at farmer's markets. They're shut down right now. Okay. Yeah, you want to get, those are, the, those are the farmers that you want to buy directly from. Yeah. So um, that's a great question because that's, that, those, that's who's hurting right now. I don't know about in your area, but in our area, the farmer's markets are shut down. So they don't have that ability to sell directly like that, that right now. And um, in most states, the, rest, the schools are not ordering food. And in most states now, restaurants are not ordering as much food, right? They're, they're, they have um, some restaurants have closed. Some are only doing, you know, minimal amount of takeout. So the point is to support those local farmers. And now and some farmers may not want to do this, but other farmers may say, yeah, you know, we'll do a drop-off point once a week. I mean, for example, there were two uh, women farmers who start up brand new in local California, in a local area in Southern California, um, probably about two hours away. And one of my moms across America friends posted like, hey, there's this new farm starting up. These, these are first time farmers. They don't have a market. They've got ton, bushels of avocados. So they're going to do a drop-off point. You know, they're going to stop at places for two hours. They're going to drive up California and then back. And they have these different drop-off places. And you can meet up with them and buy a bunch of avocados. And guess what? You can freeze avocados. Now, I didn't exactly learn how to do that. So I froze my avocados and I ruined them. I'm supposed to let them ripen first, folks, by the way, and cut them up and then freeze them in, like, individual slices. I didn't realize that. I just froze the whole darn avocado and ruined them. But... I supported these local women farmers, you know, with 40 bucks worth of avocados. And um, I felt really good because they needed a market. And so you can do stuff like that is what I'm saying. Like you can find out who these local farmers are, create a drop-off point. Um, 
and you know keep your safe distance or whatever and wear a mask and, and support them this that's how we're gonna we're gonna do this okay was there any other questions Anne, that you can see no i'm just gonna say when this is over i'm going on a hugging campaign okay <laughs> very good <laughs> All right, so in number four, I already talked about, uh, they, in this link, somebody else gave it to me, start your own neighborhood pod. Um, but uh, this, is, this is that whole kind of idea with a connected block, you can trade extra food. There's an app called um, CropSwap, but it's only available on iPhones and it's only really active in Southern California. I wish it would take off all across the country. Um, and also be on Android because, um, you know, when my neighbor has a tree with 300 lemon on, lemons on it, probably, no exaggeration, she went around just on this one street and gave everybody like 60 lemons. Well, you know, I did something with them. I froze them and juiced them and all that stuff. But some of my other neighbors, neighbors might have just let them rot. So if you can do something where you're trading, you know, your food with, within your neighborhood, you're, you're really supporting each other. Hey, so Zen. that would, Yes. Can I share the screen just for a quick second? I want to show everybody this. Um, I, yeah. think I, I think I showed it with you. Okay. Um, I want to make sure to come back to the last point. Oh, I will. I'm sorry. I just, oh, I can't, I can't share until. Oh, you... do I have to stop sharing? Okay. Let me stop sharing and then you can share. Go ahead. I don't know where this is, but I would love to find out. Oh, I think this is, um, from, from what I saw, when, one of the first times I saw this, it's in Europe somewhere. It's like Switzerland or Sweden or Norway, somewhere like that. I mean, this literally makes me start to drool. Yeah, it's beautiful. This is how yards should be. Fruit trees and vegetable gardens, and they consult with each other. They have, I would imagine, having like a, a street party or um, a, how, a gathering, you know, in January or February before people order their seeds and people deciding who's going to grow the tomatoes and who's going to grow the peppers and who's going to grow the zucchinis type of thing. That yeah, would be I so mean, awesome. That's about the size of my backyard. That's about how long my backyard is. So I'm, I'm just like, I would love to get everybody on my street to do that. But yeah, well, you, you can eventually, you, you just have to have everybody over just say, Hey, not go knock on their doors and invite people over. I did. I had the dream of this too. And I started out though, with doing a neighborhood watch because that was a way that people could wrap their heads around. Okay. I want to meet my neighbors under the safe pretense of like, you know, not safe, not pretense, but this, this, um, you know, idea of making our neighborhood safe and having a neighborhood watch. So I did that and got everybody together, got to meet my neighbors, and, um, and then we ended up moving. But um, the idea was eventually was to be able to convince them not to use, uh, oh, Geneva, Switzerland, not to use Roundup, right? To have them stop using Roundup in our, on our street, and then also to plant uh, vegetables and fruits and be able to trade that idea. So if you wanted to start out with something like Neighborhood Watch and get to know each other and build relationships and have, you know, block parties and all that stuff, that'd be great. But It'd also be great just to go door to door and um, invite people to, you know, join up in like a neighborhood block garden party, something or other, right? Um, or have them be a part of a Moms Across America chapter, right? And, and um, cooperative or whatever, a cooperative and you're sharing food with each other. Okay, and then the last thing was to take the 50-50 pledge with the Western A. Price Foundation, which is pretty neat. It, you promise to make the effort to source 50% of your food locally. And that's locally grown and pasture-raised eggs and meat. And um, you know, taking the, when you take the pledge, you take actions that you normally would never have taken, right? When you say, I'm gonna do this, you, you lodge that in your brain and you make more of an effort to um, make that happen. So, uh, and they're a great organization and they have chapters all across the country. You may wanna look up uh, joining them. And they also, actually around the world, when I went to New Zealand, the they had a talk for us uh, you know about gmos and there were 250 moms that showed up in that one area of new zealand so there there's a lot of moms we can have a lot of power connecting with these other groups another group that has 90 chapters is the holistic moms club or network holistic moms network and so think about joining up with these other organizations moms are across america would love to do a partnership with them on having uh these three organizations you know, create these cooperatives together.
because Western A Price Foundation has already done a lot of this food sourcing. So if you have a Western A Price Foundation in your local area, contact them and say, where do I get my local food? Because that's the, prem that's the whole premise of their chapters, right, is the food part. So you may not have to do a Moms Across America, you know, chapter thing if you can find a group like that and join it. But I do suggest if you don't have that to start that, right, to look up the local foods, uh, farmers and support the local farmers. And then the Holistic Moms Network really focuses on holistic remedies, natural remedies. And Moms Across America, we really focus on the activism. You know, we really focus on the, the flyers and the policies and the um, consumer education. And so I think it would be a really good marriage with the three different organizations working together. And so uh, we're looking to, to create more of that. So let us know if you have any opinions about that, if you'd like to start a chapter or a cooperative and uh, work together with people in your neighborhood to have your community be stronger. Because here's the thing, folks, when we connect locally, then we have more collective knowledge, right? When if you, you don't, won't know if something's going on at your school board or your city council or your vector center where they might be spraying for mosquitoes or your city council or your county supervisors, your county supervisors have a whole lot of power about what goes on in your county. And you won't know about these things. Hi there. Um, if, if you don't have the, the benefit of other people also learning about these things, right? And sharing them with you. I mean, that's how most of us learn what's going on. We see it on Facebook, a friend shares, right? A friend shared Robin O'Brien's TED talk with me, changed my life, right? That I learned from a friend. I didn't learn from the media. I didn't learn from my mom. I didn't learn from my doctor, right? It was a person like you that shared that, that post with me and completely altered my life and the lives of many people around the world. So, um, the more we can get together, thank you, Doris, you're interested in Chesterfield, Virginia, or you're a former Holistic Moms Network chapter leader, great. So you have experience, that is so awesome. That's the kind of person, I mean, we want everybody, you don't have to have experience, but if you have experience, that will be particularly useful. So, so email me at zen at momsacrossamerica.org. We're creating a list, we wanna empower um, you to have groups across the country. And with these groups, you will have the knowledge that you need to have in order to then eventually take your group and go to your city council meeting and have 30 moms there, right? I mean, that's powerful. This group that I just connected with in Japan, they're called um, uh, Angel Mamas. And the, the, one of the men that's supporting the group, he grew up in politics. His dad was the vice president of Japan, right? And started the political, major political party there. He was in politics all of his life. Then he became a broadcaster. So he's a major media player. He owns a broadcasting channel. And he said, the only thing that's missing is the power of moms. So these moms, he met these moms and they had already had this mama angels groups. And he said, well, I'm gonna make you guys huge. We're gonna create 300 teams of 27 million moms. And you know what that is? That's as large as the, major, uh, the majority party in Japan. He said, we want moms to be as powerful as the majority party. What if we did that here? What if the moms were as powerful as the majority party, right? We, what we say would go. We, buy, we make 90% of the household purchasing choices. We buy 85% of the food. If we said, listen, we're not going to vote for anybody unless they have this, this, and this, right? Unless they do this. We don't care what party they're from, but if they're poisoning the planet, if they're taking money from big pharma, big ag, and big oil, and they're poisoning the planet, they're not our candidate, period. You've got, to, you've got to get rid of these ideas about a political party and really start thinking about who's funding these candidates. So anyway, I'm not gonna go on a whole political rant, but you can see the power of moms is really important. And we start by doing this locally in groups of six or 10. It only takes six people, by the way, to turn something all around. In uh, Simru, Cameru, I don't know how to say it, C-Y-M-R-U, it's in the UK that entire country went GMO free because of six people, a mom, a doctor, a lawyer, a scientist, a farmer, and somebody else. So a politician, I think. And so with only six people, you can completely turn things around in your neighborhood, get that up to 30, 40, or 60 people, and you've got a powerful presentation, right, at a school board or a city council, and, um, and you know, health freedom, right, and GMOs and glyphosate and vector control spraying and whatever uh, 
5G coming into our neighborhoods, right? You can only take care of that locally. That's only addressed locally right now. So you have to organize in order to stop 5G from coming into your neighborhood. So we're gonna talk about that next. Let me just see if I've covered everything. Um, let me see if I've covered everything with this. Oh, no, one other issue I need to share. I'm sorry, this is one of the stupidest things I have ever seen. And if you can and have time to speak up to your city council, I mean, your representatives, right now they're talking about lowering farm worker pay to help the agriculture industry, paying the farm workers less because they're foreign guest workers on American farms in order to help farmers struggling during the coronavirus, according to US officials and some fam familiar, sources familiar with the plans. So here they have $61 billion to hand out to the airline industry. And at first there was nothing they were giving out to farmers. The first corona, um, corona cares package, whatever, you know, stimulus package, there was nothing for farmers. Then it went to 9 billion, now it's at 16 billion. So they are helping farmers. So why would they need to cut the pay of farm workers if the government can give them money and support them, right? This just makes me really, really mad. Why don't they ask the pharmaceutical companies to kick in? Yeah, exactly. The ones that are making us all sick, right? Why don't the pharmaceutical companies support the farmers? So this just makes me really mad. And, uh, you know, we really have to do something about, uh, about supporting our small farmers. They are not doing this for the pay. Trust me. <laughs> hey, hey, Zen, you might want to look at Margie's comment. You may want to talk about that. Okay, let me see. Said it's too late to stop 5G in East Point, Michigan. Oh. Okay, so we're going to talk about 5G now. Okay, so does anybody else have any questions about the farmers right Can't now? I hear you. Oh, I've turned it up. Okay, does it wait before we go to 5G? Does anybody have any other questions about the farmers? No. Okay, so please, everybody, at least look up switching over to buying uh, your, your vegetables from a CSA, you can still buy stuff from your local grocery store, right? You'll still support your local grocery store, but look, just make the effort to see how you can support local. I mean, I buy from a co-op, so look and see if you have a co-op set up, because our yes. co-op sources all locally when they can. Co-ops, CSAs, uh, maybe call the organizer of your farmer's market and just say, hey, I heard the farmer's market shut down. How can we get food anyway? You know, they would, they would be the ones to have the sources of all these farmers. And then, and then don't hoard that information, post it on next door and say, I'm gonna start, you know, a Moms Across America group or whatever, so we can buy our, this food all gathered together, you know, and just go ahead. Don't be afraid of being a leader, folks. Nobody expects you to do it right. You don't have to do it right. Just do it, just be a leader, <laughs> okay? <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, so 5G, yes, yeah, so let's talk about that. People keep telling us that it's too late to stop 5G in certain areas. I'm here to tell you that's completely wrong, okay? Not wrong, like bad and wrong, but just like that's not correct. And, and here's why. Number one, most people when they say 5G, they're thinking T-Mobile 5G, which is not what we're talking about. We don't like T-Mobile 5G, but, and they say, you know, it's everywhere, right? We got you covered. I don't know if it's that's their tagline or if that's Verizon or T-Mobile, but one of them, we got you covered, right? So yeah, we know that. We know that the 5G T-Mobile is out, but that's not the 5G we're talking about. That's just the next generation of 4G, and it's riding on those same waves. It's the same type of gigahertz. The might be slightly higher, but it's, it's around the same uh, gigahertz. What we're talking about is the 5G Internet of Things. It's the smart grid, and that 5G uses 5G millimeter waves that travel um, much shorter distances. They're much, the, the frequency is closer together and it can hold a lot more information. The data that it, you can download with 5G is volumes, you know, much, much bigger. So you can download a video, you know, in a couple seconds instead of, you know, two or three minutes, right? So it's, um, it's much faster and the problem is that they are, uh, they have to ride on 4G. So, and 4G is made up of 2G, 2G and 3G. Now, normally your 4G towers are like two miles away. You'll see big towers up and they're far away and they're, they're not gonna hurt you that much. It's not great for uh, electromagnetic sensitive people, right? This is all, this, all these radio frequencies and microwave radiation going around. It's not great for us. 
but normally 4G is far away and we're okay with that. But now they're putting them like 12 feet outside of people's homes for the 5G. They don't say it's for 5G right away. So if you email your city like I did and say, can you please give me the addresses of the current and pending locations of any 5G, you know, uh, plan 5G, uh, they will email you back and say, we don't have any plans for, for 5G. And they can technically say that correctly. But if you say, can you please give me the addresses of the current or pending locations of any small cell facility, telecommunication facility, you know, uh, small cell telecommunication facilities, they have to give them to you. And that is 4G that will later be upgraded to 5G. And those are the small cells that they're putting, you know, uh, they're, they're like these white uh, cylindrical things that they're putting on lampposts and telephone poles. And um, they're putting right, and they're, and they're building poles, one foot poles, 30 feet high that they're putting right outside of people's homes. And so that's what we're talking about, okay? And so to say that it's too late um, for, because T-Mobile has 5G, that's incorrect because that's just a different kind of 5G that we're talking about. But the 5G internet of things, it, it has been set up in some cities like in San Francisco and Los Angeles and New York. Uh, Wuhan had 10,000 units of these small cell facilities. Italy has some. Um, there are many countries that have some of the, you know, these small cell facilities up. But here's the thing. This, the local municipalities, because of the 1996 Telecommunications Act, um, it's specific, specified in there that the word operation was taken out of what we are preempted from. So we are not preempted from managing the operation of these facilities. That means our mayor can turn them off. Okay, and that's exactly what has happened in Huntington Beach. A woman had a, a small cell facility put up 65 feet from her home. She, when she went to sleep at night, she felt like the skin on her arm was burning facing that pole. And she went out to Home Depot and bought three sheets of aluminum, not plastic, aluminum screening and slept under it for three months while she begged her mayor to turn it off. And she, was, they, she succeeded. And so the, our mayors can turn these off. So it's not true that, to say that it's too late, okay? Our mayors can turn these off. Also, there's lawsuits um, and there are um, bills, you know, in, in, at the Hill right now, two Democrats put forth um, some bills to bring the power back to our local municipalities so that we can, we can say whether or not we want telecommunication facilities put up or not. I don't know if under this administration that's going to happen, right? I have to be honest. But um, the, the, um, the lawsuits might actually change something. That's in about five or six months. There are some cities that have sued to make it so that we, our local municipalities, can actually um, stop this. Now, there's other strategies that people have used, such as requiring NEPA reviews, simply denying applications. There are many cities, I think Palos Verdes, Palos Verdes has denied 13 applications and they haven't been sued. So there's a lot of cities I can listen. There's a whole bunch in this book and I actually just did my podcast this morning. It's called Unstoppable with Zen Honeycut. It's on Spotify, check out my podcast about all the locations where they have resisted 5G and, um, and a lot of these states, I mean, these municipalities have not been sued. And guess what? The, your city council members and planning commissioners will tell you, we, our hands are tied. We can't do anything about this. Telecom, telecom, telecom companies can sue us if we don't accept, you know, just approve these, um, the, these applications, right, for, for 4G or small cell facilities. And that may be true, but guess what they can sue for? Only the permit. They can't sue for any money. It's a, these telecom companies are giant paper tigers. They're trying to be all scary, but they're made of paper. It doesn't matter if they just sue for the permit. So what? They sue, they, maybe they win, you know, and maybe we have, there's a lawyer. The city already has a lawyer. Our city has already hired lawyers. Every city has a lawyer. So that lawyer just has to do a little bit of work, go whatever, you know, talk about this in front of some judge. And if the judge says, okay, well, I agree with them. You have to put this stupid poll up. Well, guess what? They can put it up, but we can turn it off. So most likely, if your city says deny, 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 and denies these applications, 
for aesthetic reasons or whatever reasons they want, um, they, the, these telecom companies will go somewhere else. So that's the plan, okay? Um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about, so, so the plan really is, please do not try to go in there first and make your ordinance, change it to like 100 feet or 500 feet. That's very nice. But when you get, when you get on that, that's like getting on the football field with the quarterbacks and saying, I'm gonna run 500 feet and they're pushing back you back to 100 feet. You're getting on the field with them if you're saying, I wanna talk about setbacks, right? And distances between the poles. You're playing their game. So I urge you not to play their game and to say, no, we're gonna deny. We're gonna not deny based on aesthetics. We're gonna deny based on, you know, our city wanting to, you know, um, uh, keep these things a distance from us or whichever and go ahead. If they wanna sue us, they can try to sue us. Just deny, don't even let them play that game. And if you wanna change the ordinance, have the ordinance changed so that all telecommunication utilities go underground, just like they have been before. All the cables for a lot of places, I mean, I know some places have telephone poles, but in my city, we don't have any telephone poles. All the, ca all the cables are underground. And also be careful, do not allow Cox or Verizon or whatever, T-Mobile, pull the cords out of your house. If you're a homeowner, my, the Cox came to my house and said they wanted to pull the cords, the old technology, out of my house. They want to take the copper wires and the cables out of my house. No, thank you. We're going to keep the wires that we have, okay, and not be forced to take 4G and 5G, okay? So um, let's see. Yes, uh, Dr. Martin Paul, I'm going to give some of his quotes, said, putting in tens of millions of 5G antenna without a single biological test of safety has got to be the stupidest idea anyone has ever had in the history of the world. He is a professor emeritus um, of biochemistry and basic medical sciences. Oh, it is Washington State University. That's him. I was th thinking I was getting him confused with Trevor Marshall, but he is from Washington State University. Very well respected man. And, um, and I will get to your comments in a minute, but I want to make sure to cover what Dr. Martin Paul said. Okay, so here's some really important points that he said. Um, so number one, children are more affected because of their surface to volume, their brains, younger tissues, more water. The more water you have in your body, the more deeply you're gonna be affected. This, these, this microwave radiation affects your body, your, your water in, in your body. That's how it harms, what's one of the reasons why it harms you. And the smarter your device, the more dangerous it is. The smarter your device, the more pulses it is, the more dangerous it is, okay? So we can prevent a lot of this just but just like GMOs, if we don't buy it, they can't sell it, right? So don't buy smart devices for your home. Um, and he said, one thing to be aware of, and I think especially in kids, the more that you're exposed to microwave radiation or radio frequency radiation, the more it triggers in your body fight or flight. So has anybody heard of, or have you felt anxious lately? Hello, that's exposure. A lot of it is exposure, besides destroying your gut bacteria with glyphosate, right? But exposing yourself to microwave radiation triggers fight or flight. That makes you anxious. Anxious. And when you have fight or flight, that means your immune system completely shuts down. Yes, it, it can. It's a factor in that as well. So he said the result is either panic or aggression. Folks, we don't need any more panic or aggression in the world right now. So hardwire your 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 phones. Okay, this is the adapter. This is the wire. The Ethernet cord. Plug it in, no radiation coming out of this. No 2.5 million microwatts when over 10 is harmful, okay? But that's what a phone emits when you have the video on, 2.5 million microwatts. I mean, as much as I can tell, the meter only goes to 2.5 million, so it could be higher. Okay, so hardwire, it's called ethernet cords, hardwire them. And that's what he said. He said, Dr. Martin Paul said, we do not need Wi-Fi. We can do everything wired. It works better. It's safer. It's faster. And it's less hackable. Okay. So everything you need to do, you can do hardwired. He said also that suicide rates have increased around people that have been exposed to 5G. There were um, EMT workers that had it in the ambulances. They thought this was a good idea to put 5G on top of an ambulance because, you know, they would receive connection of calls faster. And um, I don't know what, how long it was. I think it was a two month period. It was either two out of four or, or two or three out of five of the workers commit suicide within a month. Yeah, it was in a month. 
So they said they are very concerned about the, um, because, you know, fight or flight, depression, all of that stuff, it can contribute to that. He said that in rats, there were uh, two month old rats that were exposed to EMF pulses once a day. And within one second, they noticed changes, but also a few months later, they noticed all five of the changes. There's five different changes that happen in your brain when you have dementia or Alzheimer's. They noticed within a few months, all five of those changes were happening. And within, um, within uh, eight months, there was a much stronger effect and they had Alzheimer's and dementia within eight months. And he said that is roughly the age of a 12 year old child having dementia or Alzheimer's. And that's with exposure every day. Um, it was for, oh, I didn't write down how long. Maybe he didn't say how long it was, but it wasn't like all day. It was like 15 minutes or you know something like that. It was an hour or something like that. It wasn't um, you know constant exposure. It was partial exposure once a day. So um, he is very concerned that we will likely produce a whole generation with early onset dementia if we keep this up. He said that um, the EMFs also affect sperm count and sperm structure and mobility, those three things. And he said that there were um, young men tested in Switzerland and 96% of their sperm was abnormal, had one of those changes, either the count, the structure, or the mobility was affected. Only 4% were completely normal. And that led to 62% of, of the young Swiss males being completely infertile right now. And this was before 5G was put in. So who knows what it's going to be once the 5G is, you know, going and on and all of that. He says that we are, um, we are nearing a crash and that's getting, that could get us down to close to zero, um, which would mean, you know, the extinction of the human race. Now I would, he said, once you get to reproduction less than 10%, then that means the human race will go extinct. extinct. Now I would like to say, might not be completely true because rich people very wealthy people can do in vitro fertilization. So what that would mean is we have an entire human race of only extremely wealthy people <laughs> being able to procreate and only a limited number of sperm, right, that are healthy. So a whole lot of cousins related to each other, <laughs> right? So um, that's, if anybody hasn't watched Children of Men, I'm sorry to like create fear, but that is what's gonna happen if we don't do something about this. He said that, um, also that 5G has created some fires and he thinks the one in South Korea, when they turned on 5G on April 3rd in 2019 on the East Coast, they had one of the biggest fires in the country a day and a half after they turned on 5G there. And so what 5G does is it, um, is it makes the plants highly volatile and it creates something called flammable terpenes or terpenes and um, it makes the plants more likely to catch on fire. And so that's how I wanted to answer the question um, that one, somebody sent me um, earlier today. Will, will 5G be on near farms? Yes, they want to get this into, if they have their way, they'll get this in rural cities, I mean, sorry, rural towns and neighborhoods. And they're trying to convince GMO farmers that they need high tech precision farming, right? They need something, they need 5G to measure the, the um, wind, whatever you call it, the, the, the speed of the wind, right? And the temperature and all of that, because that, that depends on whether or not they can spray these toxic chemicals all over our food, which is a horrible idea anyway. But they need apparently 5G to be able to measure all of that. So they're trying to get 5G into um, rural neighborhoods and um, they apparently will be right next to farms. And this is one of the plans, by the way, for Starlink, which got approved 1 million satellites on the ground, which the satellites will beam down um, uh, the microwave, the radio frequency radiation to them. And then from those antennas, either the, the information will be wired to homes or facilities, which I highly doubt they're going to do, or they will be, you know, beaming at one, one uh, antenna to another talking to each other, which will be disastrous for us. And so it will be near farms. And so yes, it will affect the crops, it will also kill the bees. And um, this article right here, I'm going to screen share um, shows how it will affect the cows. So in this article, I'll put the link up here too, um, because I can't look at it all right now. I just, I just got it from um, Dr. Trevor Marshall just before this call. He says that cows are sensitive to 
EMFs. And um, somebody else mentioned in a different talk, I think it was Martin Paul said that the animals exposed to it have aggressive, like basically autism like behavior, you know, confusion and aggression. And um, it does have adverse health effects. So I'll put this in the chat box once I stop sharing, um, but they, they are affected by EMF. So this is a really bad idea to have around farms. And yes, they uh, do want to put it near farms. They want it everywhere. And the reason why they want it everywhere is because this internet of things will collect your information. It will tell the big companies, so this is not just a telecom company problem. This is a big company, this is big data. This is your car, the, your, the car uh, companies, the um, pajama companies, the sock companies, the makeup companies, they all wanna know what you're buying, how often you're buying it, how often you get on the internet, you know, who you talk to, who you, they wanna just know everything so that they can gather up all this big data and they can assess what's the most, the best thing to sell you. That's why they wanna do all this. So um, it's not just a big, you know, like big telecom is not just the evil one. They're gathering that information to give it to all these big companies and that information is worth a heck of a lot of money. Okay, somebody wants to say something about the, a lawsuit. Yeah. I can unmute myself for a second. This is Julie Levine with 5G Free California. I just want to say, because you mentioned the satellite right. lawsuit, yes. um, that um, we're going to be filing uh, that on Wednesday. And so um, Julian Gresser and the other attorneys working on that suit are just looking for people. I, I myself wrote a testimony today. And if any of you already have symptoms, especially if you have a doctor's letter, that's terrific. And you feel like writing a a short statement about how you're already affected by radio frequencies or EMF and, um, and, and why you would be adversely affected by having 50,000 plus satellites beaming Wi-Fi on you and also a million antenna, as you've also mentioned, Zen, um, on the ground to support the satellites. So uh, we are looking for individual testimonies and we just have to have them by like sometime tomorrow. So I just thought okay. I would mention that. Is That's this from California. Sorry. Oh, you can. You know what? You can send them. Your, you can CC me if you want. I'm 5G Free California at gmail.com. But I'm going to give you Julian's uh, email so that you could send it directly to him. Okay, because he's putting together the last pieces here. And is this just for California, or is the lawsuit for Starlink, which affects us nationally? It's international. International. Okay. Ray Broomhall, the attorney from Australia, is also involved. The astronomers have submitted uh, statements. It's pretty. It's pretty exciting what's coming together here. The weather forecasters. Oh, great! Yeah, guys, we 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 can stop this. It is possible that just because it's a big, scary corporations and we think you know, oh, they have all the power, they you know they really don't. If enough enough of us speak up, enough of us um refuse to buy it if if we can't buy it i mean if we don't buy it they can't sell it if we make it not financially uh viable they won't do it especially if there's enough lawsuits they, they, they you know and it's bad for their image i mean what you know who wants press going out saying verizon is suing you know marin county or at&t is suing marin you know they don't want to be involved in lawsuits like that so that's really important okay two, a couple more things i want to say before i know it's six o'clock usually this call goes to six fifteen though um, so I just want a little bit more time. And if you have any questions, Dr. Martin Paul said when there was, it was asked when he talked about 10,000 um, 5G units being in Wuhan and how um, he did address that, yes, the immune system can be impacted and therefore COVID-19 could have been worse in Wuhan and in Italy because they had 5G. That is absolutely possible. Um, he, he did, was clear though, he was saying that there is a virus. It is not true that there's no virus and it's just 5G. And I'd like to point out that if it were that were true, there wouldn't be COVID-19 in Iran or France where there's no 5G, right? So I, and I simply do not believe that all the technicians at every single lab all around the world and all the doctors who are looking at this virus and are identifying it are in cahoots with some elitist group that wanna kill us all. I just don't think that's true, folks. Okay, so let's really be careful of what type of information we put out there. There's one video that somebody shared with me that said, 
that 5G is being used as a bioweapon. Now, can microwave radiation be used as a bioweapon? Yes, it is. It's, it is used as a bioweapon. However, are they purposely putting nanoparticles into vaccines, which they will then use to turn on 5G and kill everybody who has the vaccine because the nanoparticles will talk to the 5G? I don't think so. If you have science showing that, you can show me that, fine. But to say that and to say that's what's happening with no scientific evidence is really irresponsible. It, it's just creating fear and all kinds of anxiety in people that uh, is not, you know, like we just can't make claims without some kind of grounds, okay? Without some type of evidence. Um, otherwise we sound crazy and it really does minimize the movement. It really has people not believe in, in what we're saying. Now, I don't like vaccines, I hate them. <laughs> I don't like 5G, I hate it. But to say that they're gonna be talking to each other and killing us is really kind of kooky. And also, if that were true, uh, I think Trump would be marrying, wearing a mask. If he were in on this, he would be sequestering himself. He would be making sure he's not gonna get the virus, right? If, anyway. So um, he said the virus is real. And also that 5G, is not using 60 gigahertz right now. So the video is going around saying that 5G in Wuhan is using 60 gigahertz and that's what's shutting down the oxygen in people's bodies and having them just kill over on the street. That's also not true, that they are only using between 20 to 28 gigahertz right now and 28 is only being used in places like San Francisco where they have a lot of like very dense population and a lot of people downloading a lot of information at once. And it may go up to 30 gigahertz or even 60 gigahertz someday. He doesn't think so. Um, when we have this, the, the refrigerators that talk to the, um, the um, coffee makers that talk to the heating and the security and the phones and the like, right? When everything in our house is smart and we have completely like our streets are smart streets, right? Because the cars are driving around and they're robot cars, right? They're, they don't need people in them. When there's 5G like everywhere, then it might be 60 gigahertz, but it's not right now. And um, so that's not true that the 60 gigahertz is shutting down the oxygen in our blood. So he said, you know, to be careful about, um, about what we share out there. And I also, yeah. so that's good because I thought that the 60 gigahertz was what a lot of these people, are, a lot of these companies are gonna be using because it's gonna be an unlicensed frequency. Well, I don't know about the unlicensed part. He just said, it's, he said the higher up it goes, the harder it is to get through the houses and the, the walls of the home and the doors. It's, it's actually makes it more difficult. You can download more information faster, but it, it, it's not as easy to get through walls and doors. That's why they have to have the two, three and 4G to be able to get through. And you have to have a router in your home to suck the 5G, the millimeter waves into your home, which I'm not doing. I don't think any of you are doing. Um, oh, one other thing he says is that for perinatal, for moms that are pregnant, really, really important to not carry their cell phones right there or in your, like, just turn it off because the perinatal period, he said that um, it changes their brain and, they, and the animals, they show the synapses of their brains were not formed appropriately. Um, and there were a lot of birth defects with missing hands and um, a lot of, uh, just a lot of birth defects. So he said it's really important for pregnant uh, women to avoid um, electromagnetic frequencies. And you can start by not keeping your phone in your room, by your bed, not even plugged in and turned off. Because when you plug in your phone, there's dirty electricity that comes out of it, okay, out of the wire. So you don't want to have anything plugged in by your head at night. Sleeping is an especially incredible, uh, important time. Also, I have the safe, safe sleeve on, on my phone. Okay, I want to say something about that, though. Okay, you're not going to like it. No. <laughs> so any of these per phone protection covering things, just consider that when, you, when you're holding your phone, if you have it on still, okay, if you have it on still and you're holding it, it's covered like this, well, then all the, the waves come out of here, and you're going to get like 100 times higher coming out of this side of the phone if you hold it like this into your hand rather than just having it out free and being able to emit whatever it emits regularly. But you're gonna get a stronger intensity of the radiation from holding that side of the phone. So if you are gonna put it on that shield, that shielded thing, always hold it from this side of the phone with, yes, the covered side 
always hold it from the covered side so that your phone, and then don't point it at your head like you're doing right now. <laughs> well, no, I don't, it's, I have it off. It's on. Yeah. Well, it's so on keep in mind, it's when we're air. talking speakerphone, if you're, if you're not on this thing, right? If you're, when you're talking speakerphone, if it's just your, your regular, it's not on right now. Where is it aimed? You're aiming. This is where most of the energy comes out. You're aiming right at your thyroid. So we really, we have to think about how much you really want to be using these, these cell phones and think about what you're sacrificing when you're constantly available to everybody. I've turned it on to airplane mode. Most of the day, I turn it on in the morning to check my calls, to make a few calls. I turn it on at night before I finish my work day. And, um, I went out well and I'm plugged in, you know, but, um, and I return my calls, but I no longer, I'm not available to everybody every second of the day. I don't care if the thing is going to tweet and ding and bing and whatever. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> I'm like not available. And that gives me a lot of sanity and focus and I get a lot more done. So I really encourage you to consider if you can't get one of these ether phones, just to put it on airplane mode for most of the day, turn it on when you want it, turn it off when you don't and save yourself some sanity. Yes. Max, do you want to say something? Uh, two things. I don't know if you've seen it or heard about it, a book called uh, The Invisible Rainbow. It's yeah, a I history it. of electricity. It's an excellent book. I just started reading it. And you were saying at the beginning about anything with thankful for. And I'm thankful to see how easy it is to reverse global pollution and global warming uh, th there are cities where they shut down industry and they see the mountains in the distance for the first time in decades. And I don't know about where you are, but the weather seems to be colder for this time of the year than it usually is. There goes global warming. <laughs> and I'm, I kind of suspect that we'll find out that the death rate has gone down rather than up in general during this period of time despite the COVID-19. That may be true because pollution adds to, uh, it's millions of people die of pollution every year. It's, it's millions of people that also die of cancer and heart disease. You know, folks, to put it in perspective, 2,000 people die a day of heart disease. That's just eating too much darn meat, folks. That's, a, that's, a, that's an environmental exposure. Also, 1,700 people die a day of um, cancer. And also another environmental exposure thing. So there's a lot of people dying of other causes. And I want to address one video that's going around from a Republican senator that says that he, as a doctor, got a letter from the health department saying that he should, uh, he said, I felt like they were coaching me to classify deaths as COVID, even if they weren't. And I'd like to point out something about that. I'm not justifying this at all. However, he said, when the reporter asked him, why do you think they were doing that? And he said, well, I think maybe fear, because fear can control people. Now, I'd like to point out that he added that meaning, okay? Something happened, and he added to it that it was fear in order to control people. Now, on another, there could be many different perspectives of why, he did, of why they did that, right? Now, the other perspective might be, and this came up when I saw an article, that a woman who went in for, for COVID-19, 20-something-year-old woman, was in for a week at the hospital. She also had other underlying conditions. She got a $34,947 like, hospital bill. And she's going on Medicare in the hopes that they will cover it. She's applying for Medicare. And from what I've heard, they will, they'll cover it. They're giving out like $12,000 per patient in some states and 300,000 per state, you know, per patient in other states. Ridiculous that they're giving any kind of difficult, I mean, different amount. But I said, wait a second, what if they're having people classify it as COVID if they think it was COVID so that they won't go bankrupt. So they'll actually well, they get their can. medical bill paid for and so that the hospital will get paid. But before you go to some nefarious place about that, wouldn't you like the doctors to actually get paid? Wouldn't you like these hospitals to not actually have to shut down or reduce staff? I would. Well, the hospitals so, make a lot more money if they have to put them on a, a ventilator. They get $35,000 a, a instead of $18,000 for an admission into the hospital. So they, yes. so yes. okay, but that. making, and, and maybe they make too much money, I don't know, but I have a friend that's a nurse, she got her hours cut, it was, it was like a year ago, she can only do two shifts because they were cutting shifts for nurse, they didn't have the money. Too many people go in and get hospital care and then declare bankruptcy. That's the number one cause for bankruptcy. 
is men our medical bills. A lot of people do not pay their medical bills. And then where does that leave the doctors and the nurses? They have to get their shifts cut. And then where does that leave us when we need medical care? I don't know about you, but when I gave birth, my doctor was not available. <laughs> like the doctor that I saw for a year was not there, right? And when I did need a doctor one time, it was like, it was really a long time before they came. Like there's a, there's a problem with, with our medical system right now. And so my point is before you go to a nefarious place that they're trying to, trying to create fear to control us all, first of all, they cannot control you and your fear level. Only you can control that. They don't make fear in you. You make fear in you. So nobody can control you based on fear. That's just, that's up to you, right? So, and second of all, um, it may not always be what we automatically assume it is. I just be careful about, you know, passing on information that they're trying to kill us all or control us all or whatever. Um, you know, it's, it doesn't put us in a empowered place. It puts us in a place of victimhood and weakness and stress and anxiety, which will make you sick. Like, seriously, I don't, I, I watch some of these videos because some of our moms from our mom's team wanted me to watch them and say, you need to have an opinion about this. You need to be able to talk about whether or not these nanoparticles are going to talk to 5G and, you know, kill us all. So I watched it, but I'm not going to keep doing that. I'm sorry, unless there's some, some scientific evidence, there's some proof there, there's somebody that is, um, you know, actually credible. I'm, I'm not going to waste my time with a bunch of, um, a bunch of stuff like that. Okay. So, and yes, people could be getting healthier, Max, because of the reduced, um, um, the reduced pollution and some deaths may be being classified as COVID that are not COVID, right? And the reason could be because the hospital wants to get paid or because they don't want the person to go bankrupt or where, I don't know what it is. But all I know right now is our government is printing money like there's no tomorrow. So they can pay for it. They're paying for it, right? And if they're paying, giving sixty-one billion dollars to the airline company, they can certainly as hell pay this twenty-year-old girl, girl's thirty-four thousand dollar bill so that she doesn't like become homeless. And I think that's for the farmers for the farm workers and the farm workers. They can pay the farm workers a fair wage instead of lowering their pay right now. That makes me outraged. Just if that's outrageous. They can actually pay them. Okay, so somebody said something about what about the effect of five G in the aluminum on vaccines? I don't know. I can't imagine it's great, um, especially, but I would be even more concerned about the mercury in my teeth that I got as a child, which I still have to get out, you know, and 5G reverberating with the metal in our teeth. But keep in mind that we all have aluminum and copper and silver and gold in our bodies. We all have metal. We can't live without them. If your child has an une unequal balance of copper and, and zinc in their body, they will have very high levels of autism symptoms. The copper and the zinc needs to be balanced out. And so you need copper, you need, um, there's little tiny, tiny trace amounts of aluminum, little tiny trace amounts of arsenic, like all those different heavy metals are part of what make us up, you know? So um, tiny levels are okay of that, but not, not the amounts that are in I have effect. gold in me? Am I worth more than? Yes, <laughs> yes we do. <laughs> Um, okay. You're so, so, any oh. other questions? Would it benefit me to do the ethernet connection to help reduce radiation? Yes. Yes. The ethernet connection is one of the first things that everybody should do. You should get this, just Google shielded ethernet cord. It's this flat cord. Then get the adapter for your phone and your laptop. There's two different ones, one for your phone and one for your laptop. Yeah. I put a link up, um, on a, like, okay. life hack thing about how to change over your phones and stuff. Looks like this. It looks like the old phone jacks. Remember the old phone jacks? Yeah. That's I have a phone is. jack in my modem. Yeah. And you plug that into your router. And then once you have everything wired, you can turn your Wi-Fi off. And it is awesome. You, I go to sleep now between 10 and 11 o'clock at night, unless I'm like really binging on Netflix, something stupid. Um, but I go to sleep between 10 and 11 o'clock at night and I wake up at 6.30 or 7 with no alarm clock. We have no alarm clock in my house. It's so awesome, guys, I have to tell you. And um, so, yeah, so anyway, there's this, this, this book is really great. I would encourage you, if you wanna learn more about it, EMF by Dr. Joseph Mercola. 
It took them three years to write it with experts. It's a really fast read and um, it, it, the, the, the font is pretty big and the words are, you know, um, and, and you, you really, you do learn a lot. I've learned some stuff that I didn't know already. And I've been studying this for, you know, two months with like very serious experts. And one other thing, um, we're going to be putting up a letter soon about strategy. I want to get back to 5G for one second before we go. One other thing you need to ask your cities and your, your commissioners for planning commissioners is to get insurance. You're just, you need to say, first of all, I want you to, we want you to deny it. But if you are going to put these in, you need a five-year plan because these satellites are going to be put up. What if you allow all these poles to be put up and then these satellites start beating stuff down? All these poles are going to be obsolete. So we want to know what is the five-year plan from this, from AT&T and Verizon and all that, right? So five-year plan. And then number two, they need to get insurance for every single pole. And the, um, and, and this is because if you don't get and require them to get insurance, then the city will become liable. And this could bankrupt a city. All you need is one lawsuit for $80 million, right? Or $200 million. Yes, Max. And insurance companies are not covering 5G for health effects. Not even Lloyd's of London will cover it. That's the point. That's exactly the point. They won't be able to get insurance. And, um, and so the cities will realize that they will be liable. Right. And they will say no, because they won't want to be liable for all of this. So, um, yes, they won't, they won't insure them. I don't know if you want to say that to your city council attorney, <laughs> you won't be able. I think you would say you need to get insurance, right? You need to protect the city from, um, from lawsuits uh, because they will come and they will happen. They've already been starting to happen. And so that is a very important um, point in, in, um, in delaying this. Now, Mark Graham, you had something, but I, I think we probably have to go and maybe we'll keep it for the next call. I think you emailed me that there was some point you wanted to bring up, but I didn't click on it before. Um, do you want to, Mark, do you want to just add something into the chat box, a link that people need to go to or something? Maybe, maybe he left. No, I'm still here. Hi, Zan. Thanks. Oh, yeah, hi, Mark. I'll yeah. Put the yeah. link. Long story short, Amazon teams up with government to deploy dangerous new facial recognition technology. Um, it's an article by the ACLU of Northern California. Very thorough, very informative, and I'll put a link to it in the chat box. I appreciate it very much. Yeah, they, they do want to have facial recognition in every city, everywhere. They just, they see it as an easier way to uh, um, monitor the population. I don't want to say control the population, but it is definitely monitoring the population. And um, it is, it is, um, it's a way, it's another way, folks, for them just to reduce jobs too. They have less policemen, right? Less people on the ground if they have these cameras everywhere. And um, I really do think that we should be concerned about our jobs going away, you know, because of all these robots and all the smart technology and all these things that they're creating. Um, we need to have jobs for human beings. They need to be able to feel useful and functional and, um, oh, Susie, you passed legislation in Washington State regarding this facial recognition. Oh, good. So you, did you stop it? No? You were still working on it? No, they, they passed it to allow it. The governor just signed it into law when, as, while we were on lockdown. They rushed the bill through both chambers, signed it into law, just like they did with the, the 5G Act in, in Congress. Okay. So this reminds me another idea for these moms across America cooperatives, right? Or chapters, whatever you want to call them. There needs to be somebody in charge of being, getting the email alerts for new bills that are being passed in your state, right? There needs to be somebody that is willing to get those emails that bill alert. I get them now for the federal government and for also for California. I have to confess, I don't always click on them, but every single day there is something new. Every single day, they are up to something. Now, some days they're just naming the day of a, the year, of, you know, after some, you know, war hero. But other days, there's five or six different bills on there, and there's all kinds of stuff that they're hiding in those bills. And all of a sudden, they've passed laws and legislation that nobody knows anything about. And um, if we don't have somebody on it, you know, you were on the alert list. Yeah, Susie, right. Wait, but you didn't receive any emails. Well, you, you should be, though. They, they should have um, bills that go out. Oh, you know how sometimes it can happen? Sometimes 
they have bills like this is what happened with 276 it was a has it was something about petroleum hazards was the name of the bill and then uh, like 10 days before the thing was going to hit the floor they crossed it off and changed it to uh, the medical the vaccine loss so they can put a bill and submit it within the certain amount of time that they ha has to be submitted and then they can change that bill to be a completely different topic so this is why you need somebody in your group locally on a local level being the, the watchdog for what's going on locally and within your state because uh, there's just so much going on that um, we won't know if we don't have somebody that's in charge of that so somebody who's a homebody who's really smart and likes doing research but doesn't necessarily like to talk in public um, they're a good person for that right and uh, so everybody's got their their skill and their talent and you ask them when you start this group here's some of the positions that we have you know we need somebody to look up allergy free friendly food somebody to look up local food somebody to, to be the legislative person maybe somebody to be the friendly welcoming person right that ch chats with people that may not be you just because you're the leader for the group doesn't mean you're necessarily a great people person okay <laughs> we all have our talents right but you might know somebody else who's a really good people person but you know, not good with details. So you just, you find, you know, have, find people that are a good fit for, for those things and start creating your groups and, um, and we'll, we'll know what's going on and we'll regain, we regain, regain strength and democracy in America. That's the goal, okay? Empowered moms, healthy kids, empowered people, healthy communities. And um, I see the, the radiation dangers uh, microwave hearing and tinnitus thing. Yes, that's one of the symptoms is hearing and tinnitus issues. Um, and let me see, Mark, did you post that link? Okay, yeah. Okay, so I have to grab it and post it before I shut this down because I don't know if I'll come back to it later. All right, any other questions before you go? Anybody else? No? Okay, thank you for alerting to us, us to that. Thank you for being on the call today. I know it was a long one, but I, I really appreciate everyone. And uh, take this information and spread the information, right, with links to what we have put up here, our blog, ask people to sign up for the newsletter, ask people to be on this call. And, and we try can not to stress you. out because that, that will make you sick. Oh yeah, we didn't, we didn't really talk about the saint. I mean, we talked about what we're grateful for but one thing I do want to mention before we go is I, I listened to a doctor's conference recently. I can't say who it is because you can't diagnose. You, I mean, you can't give dosages and stuff like that outright. I'm not going to give doses, but um, there was a doctor that said, if you rinse your mouth out with hydrogen peroxide and scrape your tongue every day, you take vitamin C, vitamin D, and magnesium. Um, he suggested magnesium as a nebulizer if you get sick, but even beforehand and preventatively, he said, your family should never get an upper respiratory infection again. And so funny, because my dad used to wash his mouth out with hydrogen peroxide. He was never sick. I don't remember him ever having a cold. So it kills off whatever bacteria and virus in your mouth. So, and it's not hard to do and it's really cheap. But Big Pharma doesn't want you to know this. <laughs> no, they want you to get a vaccine. <laughs> yeah, vitamin A also. Yes, very good. 3% hydrogen peroxide. I use magnesium oil too, which you can buy and spray it when you get out of the shower under your yes, armpit. Yes, use it as um, uh, armpit deodorizer. Yeah. And behind your knees and on your feet, and it gets into your lymph system and it does wonders. So, yeah, really important vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, magnesium, hydrogen peroxide, high dose vitamin C too, if you do get sick, like, like five pills twice a day. I didn't just give you a dosage or anything, but that's what I took. And that's what kicked, I had COVID, I'm pretty sure I had COVID for about a month, but it never got so bad that I had, I was able to get a test. My symptoms weren't bowel, bad enough. Bowel huh? Vitamin C to bowel tolerance. Yes. yes. It will make you gassy and encourage the six feet distancing, I have to say. It is prepare to be gassy. But now but, when, you, um, when you're sick, your tolerance goes up though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it goes down, you can, yeah. So it just if you get diarrhea back off you know, from a, a you know take less but um yes and zinc oh yes that's sorry that's one other thing is zinc he said stops the virus from um uh, populate you know reproducing Repl replicating. replicating yes and also olive leaf extract has been known to do that as Ooh, well i have that yeah and and, and um barleen's has a really good tasting one that i've been taking 
So um, propolis throat spray, the beekeeper sounds good. Okay, okay, now we're getting tons of suggestions, really awesome ones. <laughs> folate stops the spikes from binding. I don't know what that means, but folate is very important. Not folic acid. Probably folate. the little spikes on the, on, the, on the virus. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Okay, well, you guys are awesome. Great to connect with you. Thank you for being on. Be unstoppable, okay? Keep going. Thank you, take care. Bye.